so here we are, the 1981 DeLorean. It's exactly the same as the one that was willed to Marty McFly if the Libyans killed Doc. Minor changes, some of the buttons on the inside. Now I can plug my iPhone into a little docking station there. Oh yeah, there's a minor difference. This is all electric. They took out the engine, they took out the drivetrain, they put in an electric motor, giving this car 70 to 100 mile range and bumping it from 130 horsepower to 260. All right, so we're here with Stephen Wynn. Stephen, thanks for being with us. Thank you for coming. Really amazing shop here. Tell me how you got involved with DeLorean. Where did it all start for you? Well, I'm an English and French car mechanic by trade. DeLoreans came along. I started working on them. And then just bit by bit, I managed to, uh, to build the business up from that. When it came to your attention that there was a chance to purchase the DMC, you just jumped at the chance? It took several years to put the deal together. But yes, that was my ultimate goal always um, as the business was, was built building up, I realized that the only way really to control it was to have the total control of all of the inventory. And that way you could not yeah. only repair old ones, but even build new ones, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and when we bought all the inventory, we got all the technical specification drawings, rights to reproduce, so, uh, and also obviously the, the distribution rights for the parts. Right. Now we're actually uh, in front of a 2012 electric version. How did this thought come about? When uh, Tesla introduced the, uh, the Roadster, that really got my attention. You know, if they could do what they did with the Lotus, I thought I can do the same with, with the with DeLorean. DeLorean. And has the response been pretty good? Oh, it's been phenomenal. We're getting lots of inquiries, lots of telephone calls. We're about to announce a mechanism where we'll take deposits for the cars, and also Ooh. we'll be doing conversions on existing DeLoreans as well. Now, there's a misconception about this car that's worth noting. Originally, people thought, oh, it's a sports car just because of the looks, right? But the truth is, and they've disappointed a lot of people who expected better performance. So the thought is that maybe by converting it to an electric version, that it can actually finally hit some of those performance numbers that people wanted. Now, this car is going zero to 60 in around eight seconds, but there's a prototype that they're working on that's gonna lose a lot of weight and it's gonna be going about zero to 60 in about 4.9 seconds. When we bought all the tooling and the parts from DeLorean, we got a set of the molds for the underbodies. We're actually making new bodies with a honeycomb fiber rather than just pure fiberglass. You guys worked with Epic? Yes, it's vacuum assisted resin infused. They lay in the fiberglass and the honeycomb and then they put a bag in there and then the bag sucks in there and it actually sucks the resin through. We're actually saving 50% in weight and about four times the strength. Epic EV helped us on the actual conversion. They offered us a total turnkey solution for our program here. When John Z. DeLorean was building his company, were there other vehicles he was looking at making other than oh, this? Oh yes, they had more They had more plans for other vehicles. Um, there was a four-door, believe it or not, there was gonna be a bus. Um, a bus? A, bus. a DeLorean bus? Oh yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty cool. And uh, is that something you guys would be making? Well, obviously, we don't want to make a 30-year-old bus. We'd like to make <laughs> right. something new. Because you guys own the plans now, so you yeah, yes. it's totally on you if yes, you want Yes, exactly, to. yes. And, uh, and, and I believe if there is a new DeLorean, it needs to be something totally different than what we have now. We, you know, what happened 30 years ago, gullwing doors, stainless body, great. But now we've got to move to the next level of technology if we're able to achieve that. Do you want to be known as a sports car company? Would you yes. Want, yeah? yeah. There's no no real American sports car company. We do have a heritage, and I'd like to continue that and move forward with some nice niche market type vehicles. So what are you looking at price wise? Ninety five to one hundred thousand. Okay. And then you're able to kind of customize the inside and oh yes, and do a lot it'd, be, of it'd be quite a bespoke type of deal. You know, we'll we'll offer many options because it's going to be such a limited number that we'll have the flexibility to work with designers. The outside of the car is exactly as it is right okay. now. We're not going to change that at all, but the inside is up for grabs because, you know, as you said, when you even drove the car, it feels a bit dated and it does for me also. Yeah. So we'll do a revamp on the inside and that will give us lots of flexibility for our clients. What can we say? The DeLorean is back. And it's not just a bunch of old parts that have been cobbled together. No, this thing is better than ever. And hopefully this time it's here to stay.
All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasmeyer. See you next week.